five years and still talking, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hello, everybody. This is the Ramble. It goes from now until midnight Eastern Time. And I am your host, Alex Bennett. How are you? Hello. I'm I'm doing I'm I'm doing okay, you know. Um just all radiated and raring to go. Uh, <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. As you know, I, I told the story already. I, I got radiated yesterday uh, for the first time. They did this thing with uh, stereotatic uh, radiation, which is also, in some cases, uh, called by a patented name, uh, Cyberknife, which you've heard about because they love advertising it and so on. They've done a good job of promotion. But it's uh, pretty much in the same territory and uh, the same kind of thing. And I lived the science fiction life yesterday where I was lying in this room with my arms. My ar They give you a, a ring to hold on to, a, a rubber ring. So it's up to your chest so that you can't move your hand away from your chest. And you just lie there. And you lie there. And you lie there. And you lie there, and it took maybe a half hour or something. I'm lying there just like this, and this machine occasionally would move me, you know, make him do something, and then would stop. It would stop. It would stay stopped. It would stay stopped. And all of a sudden, it'd go again, and things would go rotate around. It was like this thing, uh, and, and then it would stop, and then it would stop. And then I'm lying there, and I'm waiting, and I'm saying, when's this, you know, it, what what is this all about? Is is the real pain in doing this, the pure boredom of it all? It, it was so boring, I can't begin to tell you. You're waiting for something to happen. All of a sudden, a guy comes in the room, and I go, well, they're doing something. And they go, oh, your bladder is too full. See, before you start this every day, your first job is to drink four glasses of water. First, you empty your bladder, then four glasses of water. You chug them down. You go sit around for about 35, 40 minutes while it goes down. And uh, he comes in and he says, your bladder's too full. I went, wait a minute. <laughs> this makes no sense at all. You told me to drink four fucking glasses of water. What the hell do you expect out of me? And I, uh, so I, I just went, oh, God, you know. I mean, all this will be part of my life in the passing lane eventually. But anyway, so I'm, I, I say, well, uh, they say, go, go out there, pee, and we'll give you another glass of water, and you can come back in and wait about 15 minutes and come back in. I went, well, wait a minute. Can we avoid the 15 minutes? I think I can just pee enough to empty the bladder enough so that it satisfies you. And they go, if you can do that, fine. So I go in there and I like pee, but I just pee a little bit. I go, is, would that be enough? And I go, I'll stop. Now, I don't know if, whether you're a guy or a woman. Uh, peeing, when you go to pee, you pee until you stop peeing, right? But to pee and then stop mid-pee and then say, that's it, and then say, hold it and go into the room and go, okay, I think I, I got rid of just a little bit of it. Let's give it a try. In the meantime, while, while I'm gone, it's like uh, there's, they put me on this gurney thing. Uh, that, uh, it, it has a, a, a thing on the bottom that I fit in that was done to my shape a few weeks ago. And, uh, and so they have to have that mounted on there, and then I get on there and I put myself... The woman who was in there to clean up behind people had already put it away. And, and the guy went, well, no, he's going back in. Oh, he shouldn't have taken it away. So they had to put it back, get it back in place, and I got laid on the thing. All the meantime, I'm only like, I still have three quarters of a bladder, and it's saying, 
you know, you just tried to pee. We wanted to, we wanted it all to come out. So I then um, get back on this gurney and I lie there and now I get put the thing up here. I'm holding it, you know, and there now it's whirling around again and it's doing its thing. And this goes on and on and on. I must, it must have taken them total maybe 45 minutes to set this whole thing up. Now, they say that in the future it won't take that long, but the first time it takes, it's kind of long. And then I hear a voice come on the loudspeaker, and by the way, uh, the loudspeaker interrupts my music. Now, let me explain my music for a second. Before you start, they say, what kind of music would you like to hear? And I'm, um, I don't know what I want to hear. I mean, you know, I, maybe I don't want to hear anything. Maybe I just want to be alone with my thoughts. But okay, we'll uh, we'll uh, uh, we'll do this thing. Okay, uh, and I'm thinking, and I, okay, Frank Sinatra. You know, I'm an old guy, and I'm asking for Frank Sinatra. I should have asked for Lady Gaga. What I'm going to do next next time when they say what music would you like? I'm going to say Lady Gaga with Tony Bennett. Then I'll, then I'll seem a little bit on the hip side, okay? Anyway, um, the, uh, the guy comes over the speaker, and he says, okay, we're ready to zap you now. I said, okay. He says, hold on, stand, sit still, it'll be two minutes. And I'm thinking to myself, it took them 45 minutes to set this thing up so I only get two minutes worth of radiation? Come on, I really want to be irradiated. Drop like an H-bomb or something in the room. Anyway... Zap, zap, zap. Two minutes later, thank you. Come back and see you on Monday. And I'm going, geez, I, you know, nothing to begin with. You don't feel anything, you know. And it's like I'm beginning to wonder if anything was really happening, whether I was just, uh, they were just conning me and saying, oh, well, we'll pretend it. And then, you know, he will get better because uh, uh, he believes he's getting better. <clears throat> I don't know. But uh, anyway, I didn't feel anything. Today, I get up in the morning, and I go to pee, and I'm having a hard time getting the pee to come out. But it finally comes out, and throughout the day, it's gotten progressively better. Now, while I do the show tonight, I may have to say to my crowd uh, who's on that they talk among yourselves, I have to go pee, but I think I'm okay. I think I'll be okay. I went out to dinner, and I didn't have to go pee or anything like that, but... Anyway, it was very hard to pee. I had a, it took a while to get a decent stream going, but then I finally got a fairly decent stream going, and by the night I was, I was back to somewhat normal flow, a little less than usual. I know this is stuff you don't want to hear, but it's important because later on when I go into doing the seeds, if I can't pee, they're going to have to put a catheter in me. So I just want to be able to pee now. But anyway, I, I, I started uh, peeing some more. So what happened is I think the radiation irritated the prostate to a certain extent, and then it, it clamped down on the urethra a little bit. And as the day went on, that all dissipated itself. And I'm feeling pretty good. I'm a little on, a little on the tired side from it, but, you know. But anyway, so, uh, I mean, it was, it was a very simple procedure, and I'm just hoping that, uh, every one of them is it's as simple, and the next day is just as easy as today has been, except for the, the slight peeing problem. And I don't really, you know, if I have to go, I'll just tell people to talk to each other. But this is what happens when you're dealing with cancer, folks, you know? Anyway, I, um, um, uh, I just want to play you something. This is just something I videotaped. I put it up on the on the Facebook page, but a lot of you don't look at my Facebook page. We're coming towards the end of Chinese New Year, I think. I think this may be like the last day or close to the last day. And last Sunday, some very nice people we know who are Chinese. Well, he was, he's Chinese, he, he's American Chinese. She is Chinese Chinese. Now, here's the funny part. She works here, okay, at a company here, a bank, and he works in China. Now he's the American, she's the Chinese, and, and so they have this they've they have two kids now and they have this long distance kind of thing going. It's a it's and it works. It's beautiful. They're two wonderful, beautiful people 
who seem to be very much in love with each other, and they have two adorable children. Well, it was Chinese New Year, and we were invited to their place for Chinese New Year. And um, they had all this food out and stuff. Not, some of it Chinese, some of it not Chinese, you know. Uh, and, uh, and kids everywhere. They invited all their friends over, and the people who are their friends are about the same age they are, and so they're all people who got married and have kids. And so between all of them, they have these, these uh, it just, it was, there were a lot of kids there. I'd say maybe 10, 12 kids there. Yeah, yeah. And it was terrific. It was just terrific. The kids were having a ball because it's a very big house. So they could go running everywhere they wanted to. And, you know, I got to tell you, Chinese parents have, are really wonderful with their children. I mean, if, from, if, if, if Chinese are good, as good as I saw to their children, it's, it's wonderful. Uh, because what I saw was every one of these parents were just loving, caring parents about their children. And um, it's something like Chinese New Year, where to us, New Year's, you go out and get drunk, and it's an adult night, basically. Uh, this New Year is not. This New Year is for family, and especially doing stuff for the children. And one of the things they did for the children at this party was they had two guys show up. I don't know if, if they hired them or whether they were somebody they knew. I think it was somebody they hired who do a dragon dance. Now, I, the one thing I remember about the dragon dance, when I was a child, we used to go to, like, uh, Chinatown. Sometimes Chinese New Year in Chinatown, San Francisco, which had the largest Chinese population outside of Asia at that time, I don't know if that's true anymore. And they would uh, do New Year, and they would have the dragon dance. They had these people dressed up as a dragon, running around and so on. So it was very reminiscent of that for me, although this was a smaller dragon. And they hired these guys to come in and do the dragon dance. Okay? And the kids just loved Well, watch. The kids just loved it.
Ik had gewoon een lager gehad. See him, and they wanted to show the kids that that, that was Echo, and I can't say that otherwise my thing will go off here. Echo is her name and her daughter, um, and her husband Sam, and they were our hosts, and it was really it was wonderful. It was just wonderful to see, and the kids loved it. Now you would think you know the dragon kids would be terrified by the dragon, but I, they played the dragon so lovingly that it uh, it really worked out okay. I really uh, I really enjoyed it. It was a nice night, a uh, nice day, and thank them very much. Here's the thing that pissed me off: a lot of great food there, a lot of great food, and I couldn't eat any of it because I'm supposed to be on a diet for this, uh, you know, for this uh, thing. It's um, the radiation. Um, I, I got to go on a non-fart diet. A diet that doesn't produce gas, which is basically just my low-carb diet that I've been on anyway, so it's no big problem. But where I would go to a party like this and I would eat a few carbs because the food is so good, um, uh, I couldn't. And then all of a sudden the next day I go to go get it. And then I show up and they say, uh-uh, we can't do it yet because we haven't gotten permission because of, uh, of, of, of the fact that uh, we need to see your, your pathology slides so that we can, our, our, our guy can agree with them that this is like, you know, that serious or whatever. Because they operated on a guy once and gave him radiation and then it turned out he didn't need it. And then he sued the shit out of the hospital. So the trouble, you know, the trouble with all medicine today is it's all defensive medicine. That's the problem. You know, and um, that's to your detriment because they're getting so defensive that they let things fall through the cracks, you know. And uh, anyway, so. Yeah, but thank you, Sam and Echo, and your wonderful children. Just wonderful children. And they're beautiful home. Be just gorgeous. Uh, out in New Jersey. Yeah, they have beautiful homes out in New Jersey. Would you believe? Okay. These are friends of ours, by the way, who, who used to live in an apartment that they owned in one of the Trump buildings uh, in Trump City. And it said Trump on the front of it. And they, along with all their neighbors, fought to get Trump's name taken off of it, which they have done, saying, hey, we bought these places, and their value is dropping precipitously because of that name out in the front. And uh, so they finally got that done, and then, then they decided to move, so... What the hell? Anyway, a um, couple of things you should know. You know, we're, we, we have been very proud of the fact that for the longest time, I mean, it's got to be oh, four years, something like that, we, we have been on Roku. In case you are not aware, if you have a Roku, we have two Roku channels. We have GabNet and GabNet TV, the difference being that one has a lot, nothing but video on it. The other one has a lot of audio and video, but basically audio. Uh, so GabNet, uh, GabNet Live, it's called. If you go looking for it, you can look for GabNet Live, is um, uh, audio, basically. And then if GabNet TV is video. And uh, you can go to, you can download both of them, put them right on your, on your Roku. If you have a Roku... Now, as you know, how you get these programs and stuff on Roku uh, is uh, through a thing called apps. You download an app, say you download the GabNet app, and then you can just play our programming on your Roku through that app. Uh, and, 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 and Roku, it, the reason we don't have a, a one for, for Apple TV is that the requirements for Apple TV uh, uh, and programming requirements are so difficult that uh, unless I want to go out and pay somebody several thousand dollars to design a 
Apple TV site or a uh, Apple site, uh, I can't do it. This I was able to do myself with the aid of a company that has an easy way of making up a Roku channel, all right? And I've been using them for years, and it's worked pretty much perfectly. Occasionally, Roku is fucked up, but, you know. Well, Roku, you know, when I first started with them, a small little company, but, but I like the idea that I could I could put my channel up there. And, you know, we've got a lot of audio there. We've got all the shows represented. We have the live stream running 24-7. Uh, we have uh, the video from last night's show and the previous night's show. We have a whole bunch of video of old shows. Anyway, there's a lot of stuff on there on the on just the Gabnet. The Gabnet TV has its own bunch of stuff too. So uh, I and I've been very happy with it. But in recent years, I don't know, Roku's getting a little full of themselves. I think. Um, and for instance, I've been having trouble with one of my uh, two of my Roku's. Uh, they are the Roku Ultras in which all of a sudden you can't get HBO to launch and you can't get YouTube to launch and you can't get GabNet to launch. So you have to then reboot it and then then they all work. And there's something wrong and as much as we write them and as much as a lot of other people complained about it, they do nothing about it. Oh, they send out something the other day say, problem solved. Well, I got news for you. The problem isn't solved. That's the kind of uh, thing that I really I thought they were better than okay well now they're really getting like everybody else ready for this now we don't like Fox right or we hate Fox but we like FX is great you know and the Fox television network is pretty good and they're not owned by Rupert Murdoch anymore they're owned by Disney okay so we're, we, we, we should like them more. Now it seems that Fox and Roku are in the midst of a fight that could impact the ability of some customers to watch the Super Bowl. And customers are likely to see more such streaming conflicts in the future that could affect the way they watch sports and news. The battle between the streaming player platform and Roku and Fox shows how the power has shifted from cable to streaming. Uh, streaming perform, uh, platforms such as Roku and Amazon Prime Video will increasingly take a harder line, according to the experts. Now, this is the example of a transformation of power in the media and entertainment business. Well, the dispute went public Thursday afternoon when fans of uh, Fox Sports and Fox News Smart TV apps got pre-Super Bowl surprise in the mail from Roku, I can actually show it to you. There it is, right there. Um, okay, can you see that? Okay, I don't know. That's it. The, re the reason that goes, I go dim for some reason is, and it's not supposed to do that, but this thing is set to do that that way. But, um, and what it said basically was, well, I'll read it to you. It said, uh, earlier today, Roku notified their users they intend to remove Fox apps, including Fox Sports, Fox Now, Fox News, and Fox Nation. Uh, we're as surprised and disappointed as you. Only Roku can remove our apps from, only Roku can remove our apps from your device, and we've asked for them not to do that. Be assured, if there is a disruption, there will be Roku's decision alone. And while we work to continue our relationship with Roku, we are happy to keep our apps available to you. And we regret Roku has chosen to threaten your access solely to improve its own business interests. Uh, and then it tells what you can do if you have a disruption. Now, this only affects, okay, Fox Sports, Fox Now... Now, Fox Now, if I remember correctly, is, I think that's part of their news operation. Fox News and Fox Nation, they're all... Um, although the Fox Now, I think, is Fox Television. And if that's the case, that's Disney. But anyway, they're having a, a pissing match. It seems as though, uh, uh, they, they, according to... Uh, 
Roku, they claim that uh, they have a distribution agreement set to expire January 31st. Well, what's the date today? It's January 31st. And Roku was playing hardball because they didn't want to pay the carriage prices or wanted to change the deal on the carriage prices. I guess they pay uh, Fox a certain amount of money to be able to run their app. Anyway, it's a big pissing match going on, and Roku is now going to dump all your Fox if uh, if Fox doesn't pay up. Okay, so that that's so if tomorrow you go to your Roku and you want to do Fox News, um, forget it. And if you want to watch Fox now and see the Super Bowl on or Fox Sports and see the Super Bowl Sunday, which by the way, Fox is making a big deal out of because if you've got 4K, they will be transmitting it on the Fox app, Fox Sports app in 4K. Maybe the only time I'll watch a Super Bowl, you know, because I want to see what it looks like. But that's uh, the, 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 that may not be happening if you've got Roku. Okay, so we'll know tomorrow if you go to Roku and you want to bring up Fox Sports and uh, nothing happens. Okay, so that's the uh, that's the story. They, they, it's, it, you know, this is these are these constant pissing matches that start occurring in the in this in in uh, the uh, streaming business and streaming has become a, a major factor. So they're playing hardball now. In the old days, they were happy to have them, you know. Anyway, uh, that's uh, just somebody that did call before. Uh, let me see here. Let me turn on the Skype and we'll talk to people. Uh, da, 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 da. There's no fill tonight, you know, so that should say the coast is clear for a lot of you out there who don't want to have to deal with fill. And, uh, uh, you know, hopefully we'll have enough people calling, you know. We only have like 20 people watching right now. Wow, it was slow last night too. I don't understand. Uh, I don't understand why. Well, what the hell? You know, if you don't want to listen, I, I have better things to do with my life. Um, you know, I have other plans I could do. Uh, actually, I want to. I, I want to leave the country, and girlfriend doesn't. So we're having a little fight about that. I told her, I said, you know, let's go on a big adventure. You know, it's a time of our life when it's time to be adventurous. And we'll go to Europe and we'll travel a lot. And we'll, you know, get rid of the apartment here in New York, not this apartment, but the other apartment, and just do some real traveling. And, uh, you know, spend the rest of our life on the road. Uh, she doesn't want to. So that's it, you know. Where, but anyway, here comes Charlie Wallace, and he already has a spot set up from last night. Hi, Charlie. How are you? Hi, Alex. Yeah, good. Good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, now we even have one less person watching us. What's with people? <laughs> the other wow. night, we had almost 40 people watching at one yeah. time. That means over the course of a show, far more than that. And... Um, but as for the live version of this, far more people watch it when we're not on live. But, you know, all of a sudden tonight, it's like 19 people. What's with you folks out there? I have no idea. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so uh, how you doing? You I'm doing pretty good for an old man. Yeah, for an old man. How old are you now? Well, on Tuesday, I will be 70. Really? Yep. God, you look good. That's what my doc says. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and and, and then we're, then we all go to your funeral. You know, you yeah. never you never know. Yeah. You never know. Um, I look good at my funeral. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You are you you're a sports fan, right? Yeah. So you're gonna watch you, you're gonna watch the you're gonna watch the Super Bowl, right? Oh right? yeah. Okay. Let me just. For, oh, here comes Josh. Let me uh, let me see here. Uh, Josh, uh, we'll put him in the number one spot. What the heck? Uh, Josh, uh, uh, Josh Wheeler. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. I got to see. I have to wait till the picture comes up. Otherwise, it, I don't see it. doesn't come up here for me to install it in a. There we go. Here we go. Is that. I've watched every Super Bowl since Joe Namath made his prediction back in 1969. Since Joe Namath made his prediction? 
Yeah, he okay. guaranteed that they would, that the Jets would win the Super Bowl. I see. Okay, so uh, let me ask you this, and and uh, Josh, of course, is a big football fan. No, he's not a football fan. Look, look at look what's in back of him. <laughs> Yeah, I see yeah. a few Bengals things there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I see a, a few Bengals things there. Anyway, um, uh, so um, um, now this is going to be a weird question for me to ask because, you know, uh, you can ask almost anybody in America and they will know the answer to this question. I do not know the answer to this question. Who's playing? <laughs> Now you see, you see, that's a kind, people make fun of me yeah. for that. But I, you know, I'm sorry. Me, I yeah. think the reason is I don't give a shit. All right, but who? Well, that's understandable. I'm sure my ex doesn't know who's playing either. Uh, but, really? You know, oh yeah, but, but I know what you're. Yeah, hey, yeah, I know what you're saying to me, Charlie. But uh, she's a girl. She doesn't know. No, but yeah, I mean, yeah. she doesn't care about football, and you don't care about football. Uh, yeah. Well, so who's playing? The San Francisco 49ers against the Kansas City Chiefs. Now, you see, I should know it because I got a rooting uh, choice in this game because I'm from yeah. San Francisco. 49ers are a team in San Francisco, are they? Yeah. No, that, that I know, okay? So now let's get the odds on bet from Josh Wheeler. Josh? Josh knows, yeah. Uh what do you want to know, I guess? Well, who's going to win? Know, who's going to win? Think a win or whatever? Yeah. Oh, I, don't, I don't know. I couldn't tell you. I mean, Super Bowl, it's always two good teams. So yeah. it's, uh, it's usually pretty evenly matched. Yeah. I mean, most of them are pretty close. So because you're going to blow out here and there. But, but, but you see, the thing that it that's really weird, and, and I know this, is that I'm always. Uh, um, Hold on a second. I, whenever we, I go to a party, you know, where they're holding like a Super Bowl party. Wait a minute. Here comes Schmooty. There she is. Okay. There she is. Hi there, Schmoots. Uh, anyway, uh, no, what, what I was going to say is that, uh, um, uh, where was I? Uh, um, I Super Bowl party. When Super Bowl I would party. go to Super Bowl parties, and I don't know, did you ever go to a Super Bowl party with me, Kathleen? No, no. We didn't go to Super Bowl parties because we didn't give a shit. You didn't give a shit either, right? <laughs> nope. Yeah, we were the two people. Who did, we were the di, uh, di, don't give a shit couple. Okay. Yep. Anyway, uh, I every, one week time I was invited to a Super Bowl party, so I figure I go, even though I don't know what's going on. I don't know how the game is played to this day. Okay. I know that sounds bizarre. But I've had even I've had major football players try and teach me the game, and I you know they lose me at first down. Okay, so anyway, I go, I go to a party, and they of course have their Super Bowl pool. You know who's who's going to win, who's not going to win, and I pick I don't know I I I pick something. I don't know what I'm picking. I just pick what I'm picking. Guess who wins the Super Bowl pool? <laughs> Justifiable homicide. And and everybody's going, fuck you. What you know, you don't you don't like football, you don't watch football, and you win the goddamn Super Bowl pool. You know. I like playing football, but watching it, I'm like, ugh. You, you like playing it, but you don't like watching it. Yes. Oh, oh boy. Yeah. Yeah, I was I, I was going with an Amazon for a while. There's no question about that. <laughs> I was going with an Amazon for a while before I ever bought stuff from them. Anyway, <laughs> but I, I was the guy who I always won the pool. I don't know why, you know. And uh, I don't understand what's happening in the game. And I just know the guys running back and forth and so on. I mean, I. I had a girlfriend who loved soccer, and I never, uh, uh, I, I, I never was into soccer. But I went to watch a soccer match with her uh, on TV, right? Mm -hmm. And I got the game immediately. You know, I could figure out how it was played and what was happening and how it happens and so on without anybody even really explaining it to me just by watching it. But football to this day, I don't understand how the game is played. It, 
I know, well, Jerry I know. Rice you're... couldn't explain it to you. What? I remember you saying that Jerry Rice tried he to He couldn't, explain and it. Uh, another guy, um, uh, Jerry Rice, yeah. Well, Jerry Rice, I know, couldn't teach it to me. And he was amazed. He was amazed I didn't know anything about football. He thought everybody in America knew something about football. Well, I got news for you, Jerry. You know, I defy expectations. Yeah. <laughs> So you don't you don't care who wins this week, do you, Kathleen? Although you know you're probably going to root for San Francisco. I could care less. Oh really? Now wait a minute. It's San Francisco again, and who? <laughs> See, I forgot. Kansas, right. City. Kansas City Chiefs. Kansas City. Oh oh, you do know. You do know. Oh, you traitor, you. <laughs> yeah. But I won't be watching it. No. Oh. Will you be watching it, Josh? I don't know. Maybe. Boy, he some, sounds... Sometimes he, I watch, some years I watch a good bit of it. Some years I don't. Boy, he sounds excited, doesn't he? I really couldn't tell you. It just depends if I got something else I'd rather do. Yeah, well, I, I thought you were a big sports fan. Well, I am. But, I mean, you know, it. I don't know. It, it just depends. Uh... I mean, that's what I'm saying. Some years I watch it. I mean, I am a big sports fan, but of my particular teams. I mean, and like a lot of times if they're not playing in it, yeah. you know, fuck the other people. Yeah. You know? I mean, so, yeah, who, I don't know. Who has the game this year? What network is it on? Is it on Fox? It's on Fox. Yeah, and I hate that fucking broadcast team, too. So, <laughs> like, if we're on CBS or whatever, it yeah. would be a little bit easier, but... Yeah, I don't know. Probably not. Well, here comes a guy who can probably. I, I have a couple TVs down here in the room that I watch a lot of sports in. So I mean, I might put it on the second TV, you know, with the sound off or whatever, while I watch something else. That's probably what I'll do. Well, here we come. Yeah, great game. Well, here we go. We have. Y'all are making me sick. What do you mean when we're making you <laughs> sick, Kevin? <laughs> Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Let me put uh, this so has everybody been the can... longest two freaking weeks of my life. Yeah. Oh, really? Always, yeah. Yes, yeah. sir. It, two, two, wait a minute. It, it, the longest two fucking weeks. Oh, you mean because of the impeachment proceedings? No, 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 no. no, no. Have to wait for the game. <laughs> it's always two weeks between the championship oh. game for AFC and NFC, and then the Super Bowl. I see. Okay, so... See, when, when, when Josh started the season, it was all about, I don't care, he's going to football games, he didn't give a shit, when we all feel that way at the beginning of the season. Yeah. Well, we luckily made it through the season, and we get to go to the Super Bowl this year. So, yeah. the last two games were the two playoff games I went to, and I got season tickets, so mm -hmm. we're finally 25 years... From the last, I don't count the last one because they fucked it up so bad, it wasn't even. Okay, worth well, let me ask you a question though, and, and and nobody, please, nobody laugh. Okay, try and hold it in if you can. What's the NFC? National Football Conference. Okay, is that anybody in particular? I mean, is that like? Uh... It's a bunch of teams uh, yeah. that are on one, and then there's the AFC, which is the American Football Conference. I see. Now, which one are and they divide that up into divisions? I see. Well, which one is the uh, is the forty is are the forty nine? I imagine it would be the NFC because you're wearing like an M NFC jersey, right? Yes. Yeah. 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 Wait a minute, that's not what I wanted. See, I pushed the wrong button here. I'm trying to, I'm, I'm trying to get, uh, uh, let's see here. <laughs> uh, oh, I see. Okay. You, you, your name isn't the same as it. it, it I wish when you, put, when you put your names down there, you would say like, you know, so-and-so and so-and-so, because I have to know that Hog Rider is Kevin, you know, and, and uh, what is Bob Kazoo is Kathleen. Uh, yeah, so I have to figure out who they are, so I know who to put, whose picture to put in the. Uh, in, oh, because we put, I put yeah. my mouse on it. It's everybody's name. Yeah, and when we get all nine people, you, we got to figure out yeah. who Gabnet is. When we get all nine of these, yeah. <laughs> when we get all nine of these squares filled up, we can like play the Hollywood squares. Yes. You know? yeah. Did you ever try to see what was it? You <clears throat> you wanted to have. Uh, 
what was your original Skype name that you wanted to have, but you found out somebody already had it? Well, it was Gabnet, wasn't it? But you did Gabnet Live. Did you ever try to see and call Gabnet? Oh, 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 there is a, yeah, there, yeah, there's a Gabnet. I wanted to get Gabnet.com originally. And there was no, a, it was the Skype handle. Oh, there was a Skype handle? Yeah. yeah. Your Skype handle is Gabnet Live, right? Yeah. And I um, think you wanted Gabnet, and you said it belonged to somebody in Brazil or something. I, well, it just would have been funny if you would have well, called Well, I, want, I wanted Gabnet.com originally, and that it was taken by somebody in Brazil. And then I think the same people in Brazil had Gabnet as a Skype handle. So that's why I made it Gabnet Live. So that when you call us, that's what you call us, Gabnet Live. Um, uh, uh, and I wish those damn people would fucking die and go off the face of the earth so I could grab their name. But Didn't I'm, they I'm, get in trouble too? Huh? Weren't they involved in some scandal a while back no, or something? That was, was that somebody else? That was somebody that, else. No, that was Gabnet.com. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's really? What I thought. Gabnet, Gabnet on Skype was something totally different. That was a dude in Brazil. Gabnet.com was the right wing political chat site. That's right. Wait a minute. Gabnet. Dot com. Let me go over there. Okay. Uh, no, that's the German academic brain pool. <laughs> right wing chat site. The, <laughs> German, the German academic brain pool is gabnet.com. Uh, if, 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 but in a way, I considered it um, a wonderful thing in the end that I got gabnet.net because it kind of works right. It, Parse is right, you know. It sounds right. So anyway, so I, I don't know who's there. And if if somebody wants to out there who's watching me now, just you know, check out to see who Gabnet is on. Uh, you know, if you just put up there and looking, you know, searching, to see what who Gabnet is. But uh, you know, there there is a Gab there. I, it was one reason why I couldn't get Gabnet. So you know, it's let's see. But we have we have Gabnet Live, and we're doing fine with it, you know. Um, so anyway, um, by the way, I've got a very nice uh, comment on you last night, uh, Schmoody, uh, saying Kathleen is terrific. Did you see that thing I sent you that they Thank wrote? Thank you, I did. Yeah, that was. I thought you would like that. That always. I always. That was I always send good. these things off to people. People make nice comments about for that reason. What did she go topless again? Huh? <laughs> again. Again? What did I miss? She didn't go topless. She took off her shirt once to go change into another shirt. Was that it? Yeah. And you forgot that you sports bra. You forgot you were on camera. I did. And it was her sports bra. It was no big deal. Well, it was a big deal. But I mean, it, it was, was two big deals. <laughs> Best money can Sorry. buy. <laughs> Damn sure, you know. Uh, but no, she, yeah. Uh, anyway, um, so anyway, I got, y y you know, you get this like shitty mail that you get that's like, it's not, it, it, they just, for some reason, they're writing you like they know you, but they don't know you and they're trying to push something on you. Let me read this to you. You're going to love this. This comes from the Ukraine, by the way. Uh, yeah. From Marion Dan. In the Ukraine. And she says, my name is Marion. I love music. I think that music is one of the most important things in our life. One day I heard your radio station. You have a great variety of fine songs and useful programs. <laughs> Needless to say that I continue to listen to your radio station through the Internet. I'm glad, she, I'm glad Marion, if you're listening, that you enjoy our music. We enjoy playing it for you. <laughs> With, with, with sincerity, I want to say that you are one of the best. My dream is to receive a modest souvenir from you. Can I trouble you to send me a gift with your logo, please? What the? We don't even have a logo. I will be very happy if you can. It will be a good memory Shit. from your radio station. I will be waiting for your reply. Thank you very much. Get this address. Mary and Dan, Chitate 15... Solotiano, uh, Tianchev, 
Skill, R-N, Zaka Patskaya, O-B-L dot 90575, Ukraine. Imagine oh. putting that on your fucking mail for your return address. There, there's our logo. <laughs> there's our logo. Send her a dick pic with a autograph. <laughs> yeah. You know, I've tried to come up with a logo for, for Gabnet, and I've never been able to come up with a logo, you know? Yes, uh, yes, Jason. See, I thought Gabnet's logo is Gabnet, where talk show hosts come to die. It will, no, that's our slogan. That's our slogan. Oh. <laughs> wow. Well. <laughs> yeah. If 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 you're a uh, if, by the way they fired what did I see they fired how many people they fire at, at one uh, radio outfit some intercom station I think uh, um, what's his name last night Br Bree was mentioning it yeah. they fired like what f fifty of their people or something in their company who were on the air so you're all welcome to have a show here on Gabnet. <laughs> You know, <laughs> why go out and start your own show and you can be on something called Gabnet? I would love to fill this place up with people doing shows. Just, you know, hey, anybody, anybody want a hey, show? It's the same as they're making now. Yeah. Here's another logo. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> it pays exactly as much as they're making now. Uh, you, I, I need to hire you to, to be our logo person. Totally. Yeah, I'll be like the logo 20, broad. Yeah. Why? Did, why was that a picture? Film. Why was that a picture of a cat? Uh, I don't know. What, it's what, a logo. What? What does that have to do with talk? Exactly. Yeah. Well, what does this have to? The show have to do with talk? Nothing. Nothing. Yeah, you know. So. And all the music we play is fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> Only the hits. You know. Well, actually, it's silent. We play music all the time, but it's silent because I can't get the rights to it. So we just play it silently. What do you think I'm listening to here? I'm not listening to this program through these earphones. Are you kidding me? I got the music on mute. <laughs> yeah, I got the music on mute. What is that cap you're wearing, Kevin? It's my game cap. <laughs> wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. It's your game? It says 49ers. It's, it's your game cap. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Say something, Kevin, and I can let everybody see it. Let me see here. There, 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 well, there's there's Charlie. I don't want Charlie. Uh, 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 say something, Kevin, so we can see your hat. Check one, two, three, four, five. There we go. Now show us your hat. There we go. Now what is on there exactly? What are all those bobbles and stuff like that? Just pins and stuff that I've been collecting since 1978. Really? Really? Yeah. I had a jacket that I put a lot of... <laughs> <laughs> you're, getting, you're getting close to the dick pic. <laughs> I'm sorry. I know that's coming. <laughs> Hold that up again because we have the cameras on you now. Look at that. There we go. That Isn't is, that, that good? That is close. Yeah. Start yeah. new logo, dude. But but it doesn't say Gabnet on it. <laughs> My son goes, it looks like a dick come to life. See? Yeah, I told you. Uh, uh, That's Gabnet. Yeah, all that, over it. That's a Gabnet. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah. Uh -huh. Mm hmm. Anyway. Uh, so. <laughs> uh, I love that. I love that. Um, so anyway, um, um, oh, she's drawing again. Here we go, folks. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Let me, let me put it. There we go. There we go. We got cabinet. Okay. Why don't you, um, well, send that to me and we'll make it the logo for the company. Will you? I mean, serious. Send it to me and I'll put it on the website as our logo. It will make everybody think some kind of three-year-old retard is running this place. <laughs> Although I am, and that's kind of close, oh, you know. That would be me. <laughs> anyway. Just a dollar a yeah. day will help this blonde, yeah. but you have to put sad music on. Is that your imaginary son in the background? Yeah, the roach. Yeah, the one that if you turn, if, if you turn the camera on him, he like scatters. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Hmm. Anyway, where was I? Okay, wait a minute. Let me let me go back uh, to uh, uh, this here. There we go. There we go. Uh, so anyway, um, 
uh, let me see here. So we're oh oh so the Super Bowl. So that's me in the Super Bowl. I don't give a shit. I don't give a fuck. And and they have all these commercials which I would like to watch, but I have to watch this fucking game in between them. <laughs> You know, and uh, uh, I, I, they say, uh, and, uh, that's our commercial. We'll be back right after this word from the game. You know, uh-huh. you know you did you the see the, uh, on the news, I've been talking about the guy from WeatherTech with his dog, you know, doing, uh, I think he spent like $6 million to do a 30 second commercial or a full minute commercial. About his dog was, with cancer. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it, it is kind of a feel good thing. You know, it makes you think that guy, you know, he has to be a pretty cool guy to be doing something like that. But he obviously has if enough he, money. If your dog do has it. cancer and he's suffering from cancer, wouldn't the nice thing be to put him down? Tell him he's ugly while he has cancer. Huh? <laughs> Tell him he's ugly while he has cancer. It, but no, I mean, I, you yeah. know, I, I, <laughs> you want to put him down. Oh, I had a dog. No, I had a I, 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 I had, dog I, had an operation. And I had a open. cat I had to put down. I looked at him and said, "I don't. Like, you're not as good as the dog." That's it. so. I, you get it. I put him down. I said, "You're not as good as the dog." Forget it. Hmm. Well, that's the last hey, time. Where are they playing the game? Is it at Tampon Stadium? No, it's in Miami, isn't it? Tampon Stadium's next next year. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> I was gonna, uh, there's some joke there that, that has to do yeah. with Kotex or something, but you know, <laughs> I haven't figured it out yet. Oh, yeah, well, there's, there it is. We're GabNet, folks. There's our, there's our new logo. <laughs> really, send it to me, and I will somewhere I fit will. it on the site as our logo. <laughs> <laughs> Just, you know, like, do you have a scanner? Yes. Then scan it into the scanner and then send it to me uh, uh, by email. I'm gonna. You're gonna. Yeah, she's gonna. So anyway, anybody, uh, since uh, since you're all too involved with the, it really sounds like, well, like, it sounds like Kevin is really gonna, is gonna watch this thing. Okay. Josh, maybe. Jason, are you gonna watch it? Snacks. Just for the snacks. Snacks. And how about you, Charlie, you gonna watch it? Yeah, like I said, I haven't missed one in 50 years. I'm not going to miss now. Really? Okay. Uh, and uh, and 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 Schmoody, you going to nothing? I'll be working. I don't even know when it how about How about your son? Is he, are you going to encourage him to watch it? What do you want him to do? Grow, do you want him to grow up gay? <laughs> he goes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do you want him to grow up the gay? I, not that there's anything wrong with that. Okay, like we got that like out the of the way. Seinfeld episode. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I mean, I listen because I didn't follow football or baseball or stuff like that at school. All the kids thought I was, uh, I was, you know, what that, are you, queer or something? Too, like how you said, well, you want them to grow up gay? I, it's so funny that that's the stereotype. That the totally. people who don't watch guys who play with each other, and wear <laughs> yeah. and slap each other on the ass, the guys Rope who don't the watch that are the ones who are gay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They grab them right between the crotch. Get yeah. bro. Yeah. Uh, when I was a kid, pat each other on the butt. Yeah. When I was a kid, because I didn't, I wasn't into sports. Because my father was a musician, and he took me to the ballet and the <laughs> symphony. Okay. And look at me. I grew up gay. Anyway, uh, no, he uh, because I didn't wa- do that. Uh, the kids uh, always used to say, "What are you queer something?" They didn't even know what queer was. What? What's that? Is that the? Is, that's the logo we rejected. Yeah. <laughs> we had a meeting. We rejected that logo. It's the other one we like because it says yeah. Gabnet on it. Once again, let's see that logo, ladies and gentlemen. This is. Let me announce it. This is Gabnet, the Great American Broadcast Network. What is that hair on the top of the head of that thing? <laughs> He's got bangs. I don't know. Oh, it reminds me of like the aliens from The Simpsons that come yes. out on the Treehouse of Horrors. <laughs> yes, right, right, right. Um, but this one, uh-uh. No, that doesn't that doesn't <laughs> work. The board says no. Yeah, no. You, you can take you can tear that up. You can shred it. Yeah. The board has rejected. Yeah, uh, no, no, I no. had I had two credit cards. I was going. I I, 
I just changed wallets because my old one was just, you know, it was it was falling apart. So I change wallets and I go through my wallet and I find cards and I have one card that expired in 2012. <laughs> I had another one that expired in 2016. So now I got these cards, right? One's a AAA card and the other one's a Macy's credit card. And I said, I'm going to throw them out. And Marjorie says, let me run them through the shredder at work. And I'm going, these things are so expired, you can't even see the names on them, you know? <laughs> They can they can do if they want to try and use these cards, God bless them, let them try. You know? It won't do anything. So anyway, I uh, uh so I, I I I to keep her happy, I I cut them with the scissor. You know. Yeah. You gotta cut a long way along the magnetic strip and then still cut that into parcels. Well no, what I do is I just go diagonal and that's it. You know. What right the through hell? the middle of the, the name and then yeah. through the strip. All right. yeah. yeah, that's if it's a card that you just expired, maybe, you know. These cards I haven't used in years. They're not, uh, and, you know, it, they, 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 they won't work. Just like my, and you heard about my, about my Metro card for the subway that I couldn't find. Yeah. Turned out it was jammed between two other things in my wallet, but not before I... Wrote to, got got on went online to the, the MTA and and said I have a lost card send me a new one and they said it'll take three weeks okay thank you very much and now I just found mine <laughs> so I have to pay full price I don't but I I pay full I don't pay full price because I have a senior pass where it costs two fifty to ride the subway here it costs me a buck twenty five okay yeah big deal one of the perks of being older. But one of the perks is they give you this this Metro card, and it says right across it in big, bold, giant letters, Senior. Yeah. Old fart. <laughs> yeah, Senior. It may, it may as well say Old Fart. I don't need to, I, you know, come on. You know, for years, I kept paying more money than I had to to get into movie theaters rather than admit I hit 65. <laughs> oh hell no! I was cheating on that one for a while because I got the white beard. I said, "Fuck yeah, I'm 65 years old." Hey, give me the discount. Yeah. Well, the worst was I had this woman I knew, this girlfriend I knew. This one, not her. Uh, huh? <laughs> and no, uh, and and she was she was actually 40, uh, but she was going to school. She was going to college. Um, in fact, I really admired this woman because she was. You know, she had, had raised two kids and uh, decided to try and go to school and graduated with, I think, a master's in the end, you know. But anyway, she's going to school, right? So we go up to the box office, right, the movie theater, and I, I go, I go, I go, uh, 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 a senior, please? And they go... They look me up and down. They go, okay, well, we'll believe you're a senior. And I said, and a student for her, please? <laughs> <laughs> that, I that, get that funny look with my that, wife once in a while, too. You Really? Why? Is she still a student? No, she, she looks younger than me, but... Listen, Kevin, anybody looks younger than you. Yeah, I know. I look younger than you. That's true. But it's the beard. If you took the beard off, you'd look a lot younger. Probably, yeah. No. Anyway. If you, if you look at my uh, earlier pictures, I look like uh, somebody just flew over from, uh, you know, Arabia or something. Yeah, yeah. Does ever, anybody take you for a Muslim? Yeah, earlier, yeah. When I had big black beard, yeah. Oh, really? Oh, wow. oh yeah, you should see my license. Yeah. My daughter says, you look like <laughs> you look like you should be riding a camel. <laughs> I was driving, I was driving, where was I driving back from? Oh, I was driving back yesterday from radiation, glowing, I had a glowing personality. Uh, and um, we're, we're going down the street, and all of a sudden it's like a traffic jam, and it's a street that normally doesn't have a traffic jam. And I said, what's that all about? And they said, oh, it's cabs, double parked. And I said, what for? They said, oh, that's a mosque. They run in there. It was like just a building, right? They run in there. They do their prayers and come out and drive their cab around more, but they, they all stop there to go pray. You know. They used to do that at the airport down here in uh, San Jose. There was a <clears throat> area that they'd wait 
and there was an island, you know, that divided the road. Yeah. And all of a sudden, they'd stop and get in the middle of the road and the island and lay out their mats and do their praying for whatever it was, 10 minutes. Yeah. And then they'd jump back in their cabs and they'd take off and go get their prayers. Well, you know something? You're supposed to, like, have a prayer rug, right? Yeah. The, yeah. In fact, I saw one guy here in New York who I guess ran a kiosk or something, and he was out on the sidewalk yeah. doing it. You know, it was in the middle of the street. And by the way, they, ha- they they also have to have a compass to tell them where Mecca is. Yeah, what yeah, direction they have to. This yeah. one was in the right direction, so they were in the right direction, yeah. so they'd always use this one area. But here's what I don't get. Have you ever been into a mosque? Yeah. Well, they have no, this, well, kinda. Well, they have this big area where everybody gets on their hands and knees and prays. Do you think they got a prayer rug in there? Well, they kind of do. They're squared off into like just drawings of rugs. Yeah, and <laughs> you they, know? or some of them have lines in the rugs so they can line up. I've seen that too. Yeah, but but the, there are no rugs down there, but there are pictures of a rug. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so they the whole the well. whole rug for the whole area is chopped up into all these pictures of rugs. Yeah. Does God permit that? Does does uh you know, it's does Allah because I've that? gone to I used to work, uh, haul uh, ceiling tiles for uh, construction for ceiling construction. And yeah. there was some churches that we hauled ceilings to. Yeah. And they wanted their ceiling grid and their ceiling tiles taken out of the ceiling so that the spirits had a place to go. They left open grid. Really? And they took the ceiling tiles out so the spirits had a place to go. Wow. Like they can't go through the tile. Well, I, I, I don't know why. They just did I would and think like, spirits. You know, when they take over some of those office buildings and stuff yeah. when they do that, they would take the tiles out. <laughs> or they would have Boy certain day. tiles put out, put in so the spirits could get out. Wow. Go, what the hell are they doing in here? That's amazing. You know? well, yeah, this is what they want. You know? Son of a bitch. Well... <laughs> <laughs> well, we're up to 26 people watching. Boy, am I glad I'm on the internet. Anyway. Um, You're just killing it out there. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. The other night we had like uh, like almost 40 people. And on the, tonight it's like 26. What did I do between now and then? Did I say something wrong? Hey, Was Alex, I inappropriate? Are you having a good time? Huh? Are you having I'm a having, good time? I, you know, this week I've actually been having a good time doing this then show. Then that's why you do it. You know, uh, this, this week it. I've had a good time. I've been having a good time doing the show. And um, uh, I think, uh, and, and, and I'm having a good time uh, doing uh, uh, radiation therapy. <laughs> I mean, then yeah. that's why you do it. Have there a good go. time. Yeah, yeah. But I'm, you know. Uh, See if you could just combine the two and do your podcast while you're getting radiated. And I, and I think I that might make it to the end of the show without having to run off and take a pee, too. I think I'm going to be fine. Brought to you by Gabnet. <laughs> <laughs> just think wet thoughts. Wait a minute. We, uh, <laughs> What, what think what? Wet thoughts. Wet you thoughts. Might not have to, you might not have to go pee. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, let's see here. Uh, how about how about how about a slogan for us? The, uh, we have had one talk like you've never heard you, you've never heard it before, uh, but I think that we need something a little more. Uh, it says it all, and I think uh, it should be Gabnet better than no sex at all. Cancer 2.0. Cancer 2.0. Well, listen, sitting over there uh, is, is, is Josh Wheeler, who, uh, quite frankly, I think after all these years of having sat there in his little, what is that? It's a, is that a, 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 a comfy chair that you can... You know, you can change the position on and everything. What is that exactly, that chair you have there, Josh? Yeah, just a chair. It's kind of comfy, I guess. I'm about due for a new one. Oh, you're about due for a new one? Why? Because it's starting to mold into your shape and whatever? A little bit, yeah. Yeah. I I, I don't like this one very much. It's okay. Okay, well, anyway, uh, here's the thing. Um, You look like you could be a Supreme Court justice. You have that. You have. Doesn't he have that demeanor like a Supreme Court justice? Yeah. Yeah. He reminds me very much of Ruth Bader Ginsburg. 
You know, I mean, he has that. That. Let's all write down a question and send it to John. Yeah. So, yes, right. You're saying him yeah. and now uh, Ruth have about the same facial hair. <laughs> hey, he'd be a hell of a lot better justice than Kavanaugh. Yeah. Um, <laughs> of course. Uh, but. Um, have you been watching the Im impeachment proceedings at all, Josh? Because you haven't been with us since they started. Yeah, I mean, I've watched a fair amount. But yeah. I, I mean, it, it's so many hours long, it's really impossible for someone who's employed, you know, to watch it yeah. all every minute of it. Right. Uh, I mean, right. I've watched a pretty good bit and kept up with the... Uh, the overall uh, developments and the daily, you know, C-SPAN mm -hmm. streams it all the time. Uh, you know, so you don't have to get it from the networks. You can get it right from them. And uh, right. Well, I've kept a pretty today. good eye on it. Yeah. And more or less, it looks like, yeah. yeah. It's, oh, it's over. It's done. Well, yeah, it's, hey, it's done. Way. It's done. It's pretty well done. Well, hi, Patrick. How are you? I'm dandy. Are you going to watch the Super Bowl? No. Oh. Yeah. Well, you know what I'm gonna do. I'm this year. I'm not, uh, as usual, not gonna watch the Super Bowl. Although it's in 4K, and I want to see what that looks like. Uh, but uh, um, uh, I'm not basically gonna watch it. But I think I should go out and get like nachos and things like that, and yes, have them geez. while the game is on, even though I'm not watching it. So I get all the benefits of a Super Bowl party without all the agony of having to watch that bullshit. You know? That's what we're going to do. We're making some nachos and chicken wings, mm -hmm. and it's all – I'm not a sports person. I really don't give a rat's ass about, especially these two teams. I don't mind seeing the 49ers win, but I don't think that's going to happen. Um, but I'm looking forward to the Hummer commercial. But Oh, are they going to have know, a Hummer commercial? Ass, wait, nachos wait, and wait a minute. I can't pass up a joke like that. They're going to have a Hummer commercial? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> An electric Hummer. It's an electric Hummer. Uh, it, it, a Hummer no commercial? No emissions. An electric Hummer? That just there should up. at least be one emission, right? What's her name? Is it is it is it being is it being hosted by Stormy Daniels? <laughs> is, it, is she a lithium battery? Uh, here's it's, no. She it says it's now. an electric Hummer. You know, no emissions. There should at least be one emission, right? There should be one emission. Exactly. Uh, let me, let me, I'm thinking here. Uh, yeah. Um, well, well I, I, there was something I wanted to bring up, and then I forgot completely. It's the radiation. Um, it's, uh, it, it's, it's, it's pretty, uh, you know, it, it's, I, I just don't, I don't give a shit about it. Just, you know, and that's, I guess that's why Schmoody and I got along so well. There were things that we just agreed on, and, and that was one of them. And I, I found, and I had just come off a relationship with a woman who had to watch those things like crazy. Oh, it's Super Bowl Sunday. I've got to watch the Super Bowl. Get away from me, lady. You know. Right. And then Patrick, I was, did you have your hand up? Yes, Patrick. Um, yeah. I think when I called, mm -hmm. you, you were on Josh, and you're actually moving toward politics or something. It's kind and of. <laughs> what did you call because we were going towards politics or to dissuade us from going towards politics? Not what you were going to say. I think it was because I called. You asked about the Super Bowl, but you're in the middle of talking to Josh, and I think you were heading towards politics. Oh. Well, I just wanted to see, because we hadn't talked to him, what he thinks about what's been going on. And he answered it by saying, well, I'm working a lot, so I don't get to see a lot of it. And I couldn't keep watch a lot of it because I was... Do you have the same thing? What? Do you have the same reason? No, my reason is cancer. <laughs> okay, so uh, this is GabNet. Home... <laughs> Wait a I mean, hold hold watched, that up again. I've, Wait a minute. I've hold, a fair hold, hold that up again. Hold that up again. This is Gabna, your home for sports. <laughs> <laughs> now back What's to politics. Now back to no, politics. Back to politics. <laughs> you know, for people who aren't watching the show tonight, they're missing a really good time. Okay? All right? Okay. 
Anyway, where were we? Oh, yeah. Oh, well, uh, did you watch But that it? is crazy that they voted today to not accept witnesses or documents. Well, yeah. I mean, it, it, it's, it's a trial. And you would expect that that's so what you do at a trial, documents. you know? Well, and it was interesting because I was watching that part of it when they were all standing around. And it actually looked like they were trying to negotiate something. But then... When they broke off and everybody scattered like roaches and went back to the, <laughs> it was funny because they were standing around talking. It looked like maybe something different was going to happen, and then all of a sudden, the lights went on and they scattered like roaches. And everybody sat down and they said, "Okay, let's vote." And it came out exactly the way they thought it was going to yeah. come out. Yes, Patrick. Um, you know, everybody's talking about this like it's an actual trial, and it's not. Because I have yet to see any courtroom, actual courtroom, where they take a vote on whether or not there'll be witnesses. So right. I, everybody here and in America is a little bit misguided on the term trial with regard to this. And the other thing I'll say is anybody who's going to bitch about what happened, Remember, because I heard this weeks ago from people on this panel and people who aren't on this panel and on Facebook, we got to go through the process. What well, is your process? It went through the process, and here we are. So everybody had their process. You know, so, and, and, and I agree, and I accept it, because I, I also I wonder if, you know, come November— this November or whenever the next uh, senator is up in November, you know, if it might come back to bite somebody in the ass because, you know, you voted not to have witnesses in an impeachment. Sorry, I don't care. I was on your side before, but you voted not to have witnesses or not to have documentation. Bye. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they're going to have to go back and answer that one. Yeah. You know, and um, I, I think... Uh, uh, I, I think Susan Collins, Su is it Susan? Is that her first yeah. name? Yeah, Susan Collins. Um, she's in a territory where this could come back to bite her in the ass, so she voted like she voted because, you know, uh, it could come back to bite her in the ass. I think m many more of these people are going to have this come back to bite them in the ass because people are going to say, hey, you know, we even if they were Republicans, we, we'd like to hear some witnesses. We'd like to hear and, and these I think people. that's what's going to happen. We'd like to hear these people who have something to say. Um, yeah. A lot of Republicans the only thing are going to sit there and say, I wanted to have witnesses, and you voted against that. I, you might have been against, uh, on a cover-up, so I'm not voting for you. Well, yeah. the only thing you got to worry about there is, will people remember? You know, people's rem yes. mem short memories memory. are short-term nowadays, and come November... It, yeah, and these people that I've seen who are still, you know, backing Trump, they're any Trumpers, man. It doesn't matter anything he does; they're gonna be more and more for him. The worst, and most egregious thing that he does, they're gonna be more proud of that than anything. Yeah. Well, here's the thing: I am, as you know, going through a trial uh, for this apartment, which we had uh, four days, or three and a half days or actually two half days and two full days. Uh, and then they didn't finish it, so we have to come back in uh, March. And I'm just thinking of telling my lawyer, here's our new defense, okay? A, we're not going to call any witnesses, and nobody's <laughs> going to, and, 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 and none of our people are going to testify. And by the way, you then, we then want you to declare us the winner. Okay. With no documentation. With no documentation. They'll, you know what they'll say? They'll say you've been watching too much damn TV. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. You know. Yes, Patrick. Well, that, that was my point. I mean, in an actual courtroom, you don't have to... I think there are too many people who are watching this and we're misinformed that this isn't like an actual trial trial in a courtroom i mean you know it, it's supposed to be it, well it's supposed to be that's why you got a judge there it actually says trial uh, in the constitution yeah and let me ask you what other courtroom can you vote to have witnesses in 
That's why that's why these Republicans are not doing their jobs and they should be voted out. Well, you have to present witnesses, no matter who you are in a court of law, to be able to make your case. And yeah. what's, been, what's happening here is that an entire group of people are not being allowed to make their case. Yep. The Republicans are allowed, or re Democrats from ever, are allowed to vote on whether or not there's witnesses. They did that. That's part of the process. And everybody wanted this process. There's your process. No, like no, here, here, here's, here, if Patrick, Patrick, here's what's wrong. There, there shouldn't be that question of, okay, now we did this and we did that. Now we're going to vote on whether they're going to be witnesses? No. You don't vote on whether they're going to be witnesses. You say, now where, where, who are the witnesses? And you know, change. please present your witnesses now. Well, it's got to be changed, Dutch. Yeah. And until it's changed, it's the process. Process, I don't. Process. I don't know. I don't know that the, 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 that that process that we're using is necessarily a process that wasn't just instill, in, installed a while back, because what happens is somebody like the uh, the head of the Senate uh, can sit there and start changing those rules like crazy anytime he wants to, you know, and I think that's kind of what happened here. All I'm saying is is that look at Kathleen. Now, please, everybody, look at her. Look at that sad face on Kathleen. I'm tired. The, the, the sad face on Kathleen because she is so distraught over the fact that they couldn't present any witnesses. Look at her. Look at her. <laughs> she got to the penis, I told you. <laughs> well, that isn't exactly a penis yet, but I'm sure before the night's over it will be. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know. um, I just think that we uh, we're we're do more uh, than 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 happened there. Uh, I think Donald Trump is do more. I mean, if he's he, he if he's going to be totally exonerated, it should be through a process of 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 doing what it needs to take to show that he is not guilty of something. You know, uh, because uh, there'll always, as somebody put it today, there'll always be an asterisk next to his impeachment, you know, because there was never, uh, uh, never anything presented to even show that, you know, that this was right or wrong or whatever. And there's a book coming out by Bolton in which he states a lot of things which would have made the Democrats' case. What they did is they, they fought to shut the case down is what they did. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, in, in the case of witnesses, I mean, they're, you know, they're not required. I mean, it's, it's, I mean, I agree, you know, I would have liked to have seen them, and I think that the American people were, were, were due that, that, uh, that process, mm -hmm. you know, that credit to see that, but, you know, it's another constitutional area that is fairly ambiguous, you know, it, mm -hmm. it, it just says, you know, that the impeachment trial resides in the Senate. But past that, you know, there's not much, uh, not much clear direction, you know, other than the Chief Justice presides, etc. So, it, you know, it's so open-ended that it's just basically fallen into the hands of, you know, the political side of it over the years, mm -hmm. and that's that's more or less what it is. I mean, in some ways, I I completely understand what Patrick is saying. You know, rather than refer to it as an impeachment trial, we should almost refer to it as an impeachment proceeding. Because it is not necessarily, you know, uh, a trial. Is is the the makeup of it is certainly based on the American idea of a criminal trial, but it is not required to be the same or even near well, that. Well, if, well, correct me if I'm wrong. Want it to be. I mean, ultimately, at the end of the day, I, again, I would agree with him in saying, you know, like Jason was kind of saying too. At the end of the day. The final arbiter of this will will be the people. I mean, if the people were were truly upset with the way this was handled in November, the Senate would flip, and it would flip in a in a dramatic fashion, and the message from there there on out would be sent. And thirty years from now, if we have another one of these, it would probably look dramatically different. You know what really but, bothered me, uh, and then we get to you, Jason. What really bothered me was. A couple of days ago, one of these lawyers for the president, it might have even 
Ben Dershowitz. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Dushowitz. There's a piece of work. Uh, Dushowitz. Yeah. Uh, there. But Dershowitz, who said, you know, if we go ahead and call witnesses and do that kind of thing and so on, blah, 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 we're going to be here all year doing this and the Senate won't get anything done. And I, I thought to myself, and like you've been getting things done, right. you know, I mean, at least having to do this would be you doing something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, Jason had his hand so up. That, that's where you know talking about being a trial. You know, the mm -hmm. the senators are actually supposed to be the jury, mm -hmm. and that's why I was just you know just this last summer I was on jury duty, mm -hmm. and my jury duty was like a week and a half, and it it was such an awesome experience. I loved it. I loved every mm -hmm. part of it because we were actually. You know, in the sentencing of the person that we found, you know, like originally we were all saying this guy's innocent, yeah. and it took one person to say we need to reread this. Ray reread re some part of evidence, and we all flipped. It was just mm -hmm. you know, no, you know, because if this is true, this means if for this person to be innocent, everybody would have to be conspiring together to make this person to be innocent, and if the jury could have the right to say we're going to let these witnesses speak, but we're not going to let these witnesses speak. Mm -hmm. It would, it, it totally taints the jury because you can come to a conclusion at first. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then, but like I said, in our jury, we already came to a conclusion. We found this guy, Hey, they yeah. didn't prove nothing. Right. But right. then we reread evidence and it's like, you know, when you put that together, you know, we all changed our mind. You know, if we would have sat there and made a vote on to not allow any more evidence to be entered into this thing, you, you taint your own jury. The jury's tainting itself. Yeah. Uh, uh, Ray's just joined us, Ray Renati. Um, Ray, anything you want to j jump in with? Y your, your microphone isn't on, Ray. Uh, there, what, what, there, there, now it's there. You yeah. go, yeah. Uh, regarding impeachment, yeah. Uh, uh, no, I mean, like Josh was saying, I mean, calling it a trial is a misnomer. Yeah, it's not a trial. It's a political event. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's based on some. Well, no, I think it's supposed to be. I, I, I have to disagree. I think it's supposed well, to be a trial to this extent that the president, while he's in office. Uh -huh. cannot be uh, tr tried for anything criminally in a criminal court of law. I mean, he yeah. could literally murder... I mean, he could, well, let me finish. He uh, could, he, he, correct me if I'm uh, wrong, Josh, but he could murder somebody, and he can't I'm be judged in a court of law, but he right. could be adjudicated in the Senate. Okay? Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, that's, that's the argument by many, and the reason, you know, like I was saying, that it's not... A, a true trial just because it's not spelled out clearly for that so it's open to interpretation and there are some people like you know like Dershowitz I mean he's laughable in some ways because he made the argument the other night when I'm driving around and I'm listening to it on Sirius Satellite Radio you know and he's making the argument that you know abuse of power is not a crime so it's not an impeachable offense yeah. but he's also the same guy who makes the argument that the president can't be uh, charged with a crime while in office. So under Dershowitz's logic, a, a president can basically get elected, and on the first day, he can begin abusing his power, applying pressure, applying extortion, you know, mm -hmm. applying these sorts of methods that are clear abuse of power. He can then get on TV and say, yes, I did it, I abused my power. And according to Alan Dershowitz, well, as soon as he's out of office, you can charge him with a crime, but... You know, you've only got like a thousand more days. You got to well, wait. You know, Dershowitz, teaching for Dur it, and you can't charge him for it. So what? You, you, he just get a free pass for four years? Uh, yes, I mean yes. that. Well, that's kind of, stuff, that's be, kind of logic from someone like Dershowitz that I find he, he laughable, and he's supposed he to be, be a constitutional scholar. He can't be charged with it, but he can be impeached for it. Uh, for abuse of power, again, Dershowitz. His argument is that abuse of power is not an impeachable offense. Dershowitz is from the school of thought that there are really only three impeachable offenses, mm -hmm. and those are the three spelled out clearly in the words of the well, U.S. Constitution. Well, well, Outside of that, you know, mm -hmm. you, 
you can't do anything well, about it. Well, I mean, that's well, what I'm saying. Well, he, yeah. He, well, uh, well, let mean, me let me let me bring up the fact that uh, Dershowitz uh, certainly uh, knows about the law because he has defended people like. Oh, Jeffrey Epstein, O.J. Simpson, yeah. Klaus von Bülow. Uh, who else has he been? Uh, he, he seems to take the side of some pretty onerous people, you know? Yes. Uh, but I, yeah, I, I, I saw mean, a video clip. Talking to I saw a video clip of him during the Clinton can, uh, impeachment saying completely opposite yeah, of what he's opposite. saying right now. Yeah. There's a del- yeah. I mean, he, look, listen, he, he's a constitutional fucking ambulance chaser. Right? <laughs> he will show up and say whatever the fuck you want him to say if right. you've got enough money. I mean, I mean, you know, so, and he's very so convincing. Him and Trump were basically made for each other. You know? Yeah, and, and he's very convincing because he knows how to say it and what to say in a way that. Yeah, I mean, you know, he's you... right. I mean, he's he's he can get on C-SPAN with the best of them. No doubt. He's a, I mean, he's yeah. a good lawyer. Well, right. I don't know how good this a lawyer he is. brought to you by... <laughs> wait, 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 wait a minute. Hold on a second. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Let me, uh, let me see if, we, if I can just get that. Everybody be quiet. Let's see here. Uh, uh, say something, Kathleen, before you hold it up so we can get your I picture. Said, and this segment is brought, brought to you by... Okay, go ahead. Hold up. There we go. Gap <laughs> that condoms and then what is... All cock, no top. I'm recording this. <laughs> Are you? <really>? <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> I'm going to post that on the Facebook. Okay. Like I said, just a dollar a day will help this blonde. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what it costs to color your hair? No. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, man, I'm telling you. It's... it's that's yeah. right, Gabnet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Who is that? <laughs> That's our new logo. It's an Oompa Loompa. It's our new logo. Yeah, she's uh, she's the logo queen now. <laughs> the yeah. logo broad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, you're a little out of sync. I don't know why, uh, Kathleen. But yeah. I I don't know. Broadcasting from Japan. Yeah, but uh, she, don't worry about it. It doesn't matter. Uh, she she's still blonde. You know. It's the Skype. The Skype just doesn't work as well as it used to. Oh, no, sometimes it does. Like, you're in sync. Yeah, but I mean, it always worked well, before. Well, maybe, it was no. always sharp, and, like, everyone was in sync, and it never crashed. But you're not in sync right now. I'm not? You know, I don't think so. No. no. It is for know. me. Yeah. It is. And, 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 and Kathleen, you're in sync for me, so. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you're more in sync than Kathleen was. And uh, yeah. but, but what the hell? Who cares? Well, uh, who, who gives? Knows? Who, who gives a good guy? It's Phil's fault. Who gives a good diddly fuck? You know. Where's Phil? Phil oh, Phil's got the. Oh, is Phil's taking the. the is taking the night off. He has important things to do. You know. He's taking care of business. The rug doctor. He's preparing yeah. his guns. Yeah. <clears throat> he was loading a gun the other day I, on the show. Yeah. 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 I know, I was there. God, guns give me the creeps. Yeah. You know? I know. I, I used to shoot them a lot, and now they give me the creeps. Yeah, no, I don't. I, I, I you know, I, I can't even touch one. If you handed me a gun, I can't hold it. I, I just, you know, there's something about them that's so repellent to me. You know what's sad well, is what? here in Tracy, we had a student at one of the high schools uh, commit suicide. Really? Yes. And, you know, I was telling, I went and visited some of the kids at the school up the street from me that I used to work at. And I was telling them when I was a kid, we didn't have, um, because some of the kids knew, their older siblings knew this guy. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know, when I was a kid, the only drills we had were earthquake and fire. We had no shooting drills. And I said, and it was absolutely unheard of, of hearing Anybody kill themselves, let alone kids. Yeah, uh, it's just sad. Th- there's a very high suicide rate rate among kids. In yes, this you know, here in Palo Alto, we have the train tracks, and we had a yes. kids ki- crossing and getting killed on the train tracks all the time <clears throat> impulsively. So now they have to put guards n- near both high schools. They're both near the train tracks, twenty four seven, to make sure the kids don't jump in front of the train. Sad. 
Yeah. 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 Uh, I knew I knew two kids that did. Uh, uh, you know, you uh, uh, Kathleen has a kid. How old is he now? He's 13, is it? 14. 14. 14. So he had his bar mitzvah, did he? Yeah. Uh, uh, anyway, uh, he's 14. No, who's the one who comes he's in four, and does he, that? He, he's 14, and you send him to school every day. Do you worry about that? Yeah, you know, starting next year, he'll be doing online at home. Mm-hmm. Do you, do you, because just at the junior high school he goes to, there's fights at least once a week. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's pathetic. Yeah. Don't yeah. don't do homeschooling. You know, it, if you can afford to put him at a different school or something, do it. He needs the social interaction. The homeschooling. Oh, he hates. He wants nothing to do with those kids. He yeah. feels. He has I I, I get it. I understand. And I, I've heard you talk about your son before. You know, but I I. The social interaction is very important. You know, but maybe Jason, that school that. is not right. You know, he has us. Different. He has us. Yeah, he has us. Yeah. We're, I mean, seriously, Jason. He's going into high school? Is this enough? Yeah, but I certainly wouldn't send him to any high schools here in Tracy. They're all gang, you know, there's all kinds of stuff going on over here. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I haven't yeah, heard I much about them up there, but. I know it's bad. We had the same problem in middle yeah. school here, but the high school's gotten a little bit better so far. But well, you, you know, you, you have the. Are there private schools around you? Nope, not here in Tracy. Yeah, you don't have much Christian there. Christian schools, but I'm sure as hell not sending them there. I, but you, you know what? Honestly, you know, I was thinking about with my kid too. I, I want. I, I don't want to send him to a Christian school, but a lot of the Christian schools are really, they do put their little Christianness on it. But they also are aware and acknowledge that people aren't of their same religion, and a lot of times it's a good educational experience. Catholic schools not the one usually... over here. It's very clicky. Catholics. Uh, he went to, to the Catholic. youth group for about six months, and it was not a good experience. What were you going to say, Ray? Well, uh, in my experience, because I went to Catholic schools, um, the kids who aren't Catholic, they they really don't force them to do anything Catholic. The Christian schools will, but the, yeah. you know, the Catholic schools, if you're not Catholic, you don't have to do any of the Catholic stuff. Mm -hmm. So if they have a Catholic, and they're usually pretty affordable and pretty good, the Catholic schools. Yeah, yeah. Just, a, just an idea. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, uh, when, if you're going to send the kid to, you're going to do the kid with homeschooling, that means you're going to have to do a lot of work, too, with the kid. What do I care? Yeah, I mean, you're going to, I would imagine. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, especially like when you and I were talking the other day, if I move. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But you can buy, like, whole kits of homeschooling, right? Oh, yeah. And then just go through oh, yeah. the program. Yeah. Especially if I can do it from anywhere in the world. It's just funny, like, right now, because my kid, he's a little different, too. He's having a sleepover right now with his girlfriend, like, not girlfriend but a girl oh. friend <laughs> and it's like i just i growing up i could never have seen that girl was never allowed in my uh uh bedroom you know it was just it was you know totally different times it's like crazy yeah. it's weird me hmm. too it's like i wouldn't i couldn't have that and then the other night my son had his friends over and one of them was a girl and she was like here all night with him and then the next day there was another girl a different girl <laughs> My son would feel that absolutely really cute. inappropriate. <laughs> well, they weren't doing it. Wait, 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 what know, he, wait, still, what he, wait a minute. No, he, the kid, wait, hold on a second. The kid was just complaining. What did he say? To come on, mom. No, he said, goes, I could care less. Yeah, yeah. because my, my kid, he's like almost 12, and he still says he doesn't see, you know, I don't see color. He doesn't see sex. Yeah. <laughs> Mm. How old is he now? Almost twelve. Oh well, he will see sex, right? <laughs> pretty, soon, pretty damn soon. He will. He yeah, will. Um, he will finally, when he grows up, go through a period of time where about every ten minutes he thinks about sex. But he's twelve, dude. I was there at ten. <laughs> I'll give him another two months. <laughs> right. <laughs> And I'm then it's like, going to hit like, like a brick wall, It's like, it's like yeah. 10 more minutes. You guys are sleeping. Hang on a second. Right? I got to go close my door. Hang on a second. 
Well, why does he have to close the door? <laughs> this is the conversation we're having. Back. Yeah, we're not allowed to talk about that with the door open. Well, you know, okay. I mean, I, I'm good now. You know, yeah, I, yeah, it, it's, it's water, funny. Right? It's funny. I reached 80 and I suddenly realized I'm one of these guys who says, when I was a boy, you know, and then I feel ashamed of it because, but I'm just thinking about when I was growing up, we didn't, I wasn't, yeah, I was afraid of school because maybe there was a bully there who wanted to yeah. meet me in the schoolyard after school or something like that. But, I mean, I wasn't worried that somebody was going to come in and start shooting up the place, yeah. you know? Yeah. I mean, Well, you know, we've talked about that already over the last year or two. <laughs> but what, my question, what has caused that? I don't think it's that we've changed. I think that our form of communication has changed, and the speed of communication has changed. And so when, say, somebody gets shot in a school, we hear about it immediately, and then it's 24-7 on, on those cable networks. But and, and everybody at the same time, our access to weapons has changed. It's so much yeah. easier to get a gun you, than have these guns. Oh, I, yeah. you know, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You don't think it was easy to get guns when I was growing up? What kind of gun did you have when you were growing up? Because I'm sure you there were guns in your I, house. I, I, no, there weren't guns in my house. Huh? There were not See, guns there, in my there house. There were guns in my house when I was growing up. And I, when I was eight years old, I slept with a 12-gauge shotgun under my bed. My dad told me, he put it there. He said, in case there's an emergency, here's the gun. I knew how to use it. But mm -hmm. it was a 12-gauge shotgun. I well, you, know, didn't, nowadays, you, also, you also didn't have social media and kids beating the shit out of each other over yeah. social media. That's but, the big problem. But still, nowadays, it's not a 12-gauge. Nowadays, nowadays, you know, maybe it's not a gun underneath your bed. There's an, you know, AR-15 sitting yeah, in your parents' Yeah, but it doesn't bedroom. matter what kind of gun it is. It still shoots and it still kills, and, and social media beat the shit out of each other over electronics. And that's but what starts it. If there's a it, gun that also holds gun. 30 to 50 rounds versus a gun that might hold five, there's a little right. bit of difference but there, still, too. One Cat trigger pull kills. Kathleen, I've never asked. I don't think you can only put three in the in the yeah. shotgun. I don't think I've ever asked Kathleen this. Do you have a gun in your home? Sure. You do. I mean, I grew up military. My stepdad is a retired colonel. We all knew, as kids, how to shoot, and there were loaded weapons hidden all over the house just in case of an emergency. Mm -hmm. But we all knew how to use them, and we knew not to touch them unless it was an emergency. Right. So in your house, uh, do you have it in a safe or something or a? No. Really? Yeah. Hmm. Because a lot of people, I mean, like Phil keeps his in a safe. So that's another that's another problem, social problem, the, is that some people don't take care of them correctly either. I mean, there's, it's 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 the parents that probably don't take care of them correctly, mm -hmm. which is a parent's problem. It's mm -hmm. the parents that probably don't monitor their kids on social media that beat up other kids on social media. So you got two bad things right there, and then they got free reign to them. So they take them to school and they shoot kids, right? So you, they're beating each other up on social media. The parents don't take care of the guns at home. They have access to them. They take them to school, and guess what? They try and solve their problems. And, you know, a lot of times, you know, nowadays, you know, when I was a kid, when my real dad was still alive, my mom was a stay-at-home mom, and my dad went to work. Nowadays, both parents are working. They're placating the kids with electronics, and they're wondering why their sons are impregnating the girls, and they're wondering why their daughters are getting knocked up. That's true. And then the because guns are by themselves. Because there's nobody watching the kids. Yep, that's true, too. It all starts at home. Yeah. But but still, don't you think of media, the preponderance of media when these things happen, is is causing it to exponentially grow? I mean, uh, I, I think don't it has... Don't argue that either. You know, it has to do with communication, you know, and the, yep. the fact that we're communicating that there is a problem there, and people are, you know, they, it, just the people alone who are going to do these incidents with guns so they can be known... Okay, and have notoriety, copycat. huh? It's copycat. Oh, look what he did. I can make a yeah. name for myself. I'll do it too. Exactly, exactly. So, We've know. had no weapons at my son's school, like guns, but there's been knives. You know, I mean, we, we, I, I. So you're saying you got some Mexicans there, huh? 
You know, well, I, yeah, it's the <laughs> I don't remember the children being at risk. The only at risk I think that when I was growing up that did exist was maybe someone who would try, if you were a girl, who would try and take advantage of you or kid. Uh, there were kidnappings occasionally, you know, that kind of thing happening. But nothing, nothing like we have today. Nothing where, where you know, I talked to Kevin and Kevin says. He's afraid to send his kid to school sometimes, you know? Uh, Ray. I just found a really great graph. It's a uh, school number of pe school shootings since 1970 until two, 2020. Mm -hmm. And um, so in 1970, uh, there were 21. And then, it, and then it went down in 1976 to like 10. And then it slowly rose up to 38 by 1988. Mm-hmm. And then it stayed about the same and went down in the in the 90s, and it, there was a big spike in the 2000s. Uh, and now, right now, is the, definitely the worst since 2014. Yeah. But it didn't really. There was there were quite a few. We just didn't hear about them. There were a lot in the past. Yeah. They just like Alex said, they weren't uh, reported in the same way. No. I'm looking here. There, there. It's not like there weren't any. Right. I mean, there was like 20, 25 a year we have since a lot 1970. Now, now there are. Um, so since two, since uh, well, 2010 there was only 15, but then in 2014 there were 46, hmm. and then in 2018 there were 116. So yeah. Yeah. And, you know, when I was in high school, the gang activity was between the gangs and it was never on campus where now the cartels have absorbed the gangs and they have no regard for whomever they take out. My. Yeah, right. Hmm. Well, you know, all I know is that uh, I sit here at 80 years of age going, when I was a boy, we never had these problems. And I'm sure that most of you on this panel, who are of varying ages, going from uh, very old, me, to teenagers like Patrick, uh, and, uh, uh, you know, I, I think we, to varying degrees, never had these kind of problems that kids are facing in school today. Hmm? These were not our major concerns. It wasn't your concern, was it, Patrick? Um, and you're the youngest one here, I believe. No, I, I, I think Josh is a little younger than me. But um, no, I, when I was in high school, we had a bomb threat, and uh, they had us all sit on the lawn. I mean, the fucking building could have went up, mm -hmm. and we went right with it. But we were on the lawn. Yeah. Um, no. And there were there were a couple of kids that brought guns to school, but they were going hunting or whatever, and they were, you know, like in the back window of a pickup truck or, or yeah. that sort of thing. And I grew up with guns, and I, it never fazed me. I mean, if somebody handed me a weapon, the first thing I did was make sure it was empty. Right. I mean, I, I that just, and, you know, trigger memory and, and all of that, it, it just, it was ingrained in me. So I... I don't know. I it was different then, but um, you know, I, I think it falls on the part of the parents of teaching their kids if you're going to have weapons, uh, how to use them. Um, you know, and, and if they're around, don't touch them. Well, I had this friend of mine who was a, was a, I've told told this story before. Who was a, he, he had problems. You know, he, he he had problems as a child. And I went over to his house one day, and he said, look what I got. And he had a gun. And he took the gun and pointed it at me and cocked it and held it in my face for about an hour. Jesus. Uh, you, want a, you want a reason why I don't like guns and why they scare the shit out of me? Well, I just told you why, you know? And, uh, but, but that was the closest I came to any kid having a gun. Okay, and it wasn't like he then took the thing to school with him and shot up the place or anything like that, you know. So, what were you going to say, Ray? I just have a little theory here. So, like, I went, my middle school was 
really rough because they bust people in from this place called Alviso, which is got flooded, so there's no one there anymore. But it was it was uh, people from Mexico, and then there were Mexican Americans in 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 our neighborhood, and it was like mm-hmm. lower middle class, and there was always gang fights and knives and chains and bullies and and I I had guns. We hunted. I had my own shotgun. But I never even dawned on me to like, you know, take it out on people. And I'm thinking, I think that there are certain kids, like all these kids play first person shooter games. Mm-hmm. And yeah. there are certain kids who have, who are a little not, not right. And they're influenced by that. And they also have access to guns. And then you have like the perfect, you know, chemistry between a mental illness the idea of shooting mm-hmm. people all the time because they spend hours doing it on their computer screen and then transferring that into real life. Okay, but well, we didn't have desensitized. Yeah, exactly. I'm not blaming games. I'm just saying that for certain kids, I think it might play part of the role. Okay, but let me let me say something that you know that you were talking about video games. Uh, I am the most uh, nonviolent person I know. Uh, I don't like guns. They scare the shit out of me. I love first-person shooter games. Me too. I get addicted to them. But I, I, yeah. that's not what I mean. I mean a different – somebody who's already has some sort of issue. Because like, I, I realize what I'm shooting reality. at. Reality. Oh, I realize what I'm shooting at are pixels, you know. Uh, and, I'm, and I'm amazed, by the way, how well these programs are constructed. I mean, the guys die rather violently when you shoot them. They keel over, you know, blood oh, yeah, spurs out. blood and everything. Yeah. 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 But I mean, why is it that I'm nonviolent? The guns scare me, and yet I enjoy that. Because you don't have borderline personality disorder or anything like that. You know, they don't. They, some people can't draw the line. Oh, there's nothing borderline you don't have about sociopathic tendencies. There's not. Yeah. There's nothing. Nothing borderline about my, uh, you know, dysfunction. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think I think it's I think it's uh, you know it, it. I often wonder that about myself because I really enjoy it. I can play for hours, you know. Uh, and it's and, fun. Huh? Yeah, and I, I especially yeah. like the games that are adventure games too, like Tomb Raider, where you're yeah. jumping over things and jumping on things, and then you've got to start. You get they, some things where you got to shoot people and get yourself out of some place. <laughs> Uh, but it doesn't make me want to go out and buy a gun and start shooting people. So I don't know that video games do that. Unless well, I think you, just for a small portion of the population, a very small portion. The, and those I've are the never, ones who. Yeah, I remember like watching you play video what? games, Alex, when Tomb Raider first came out. Yeah. And man, you used to get so pissed that sometimes you would just hit reset. Are you talking about Lara Croft? <laughs> well, yeah, he yeah. played, he'd be pissed. Yeah, well, that was the days when, when she had a crease in her knees and stuff like that. Yes. It was really bad programming, old programming. Uh, and I used to like to get her down on her hands and knees and move her back and forth. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Are you talking about uh, Tomb Raider or Schmoody? Tomb, uh, well, Tomb Raider. Yeah. Tomb Raider. <laughs> Tomb Raider. Her son is there. Don't yeah, her son is there. I. Son's all, uh, uh. <laughs> yeah. Just keep it real, buddy. It, it, keep it real. You know, I mean, uh, you know. So I mean, it it it's uh, but uh, it, it's just the whole world in which these kids are growing up today, and the fears that they have that they have that I never had to face, and I feel sorry for them. You know. It causes a lot of anxiety, I'll tell you that. In I mean, my, in my in my seventeen year old. You know, I wanted to be uh you know, I wanted to live into this future because this was the future I always dreamed about. And that's the good thing about it. You know, the bad thing about it is what came with this future were all these evils that we didn't have before. You know, yeah. life was pretty simple. You know, back in those days, what do we think of as the as the worst thing that could happen to you? There were mobsters who who killed each other. There were gangsters. That was it, you know. Well, for me, it was the Cold War. I was scared to death of Russia, of the Soviet Union blowing us up. Well, it really was. when I was going to school in the 50s, you know, it was duck and cover days. Yeah, yeah duck cover. I had to do that, too. Yeah. 
in, uh, the, in the six, 70s. And, and by the way, they've since learned that if you duck and cover, you're still going to get blown to shreds. Yeah, yeah. You might be able to kiss your ass goodbye. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, exactly. No, they. Like they, one time the kids asked me if there were homeless people when I was a kid. I said, no, there were hobos. Exactly, <laughs> hobos. Yeah, hobos. Hobos and winos. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, uh, I remember they, they told yeah. us you get under your desk and then you cover your neck with your hand. Yeah. So that you yeah, protect your that. spinal column. I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, that ain't going to do shit. And then the siren would go off every Friday at 11. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, uh, uh, you know, but th th those were scary times because we worried about the bomb. Yeah. You know, there was always something looming that we were afraid of, but that was something which we were afraid of cumulatively. We weren't afraid that somebody was going to come to school with a bomb. Get what I'm saying? Right. Yeah, you right. know. Yeah. It was a Friday for a, a fire or a bomb or something like that. Yeah. We always said bomb scares. People would call and say there was a bomb. But there never was. Well, we and we, we never to, even like, had we never even had those. I don't think we even had those. We had them a lot. I think it's because I live right next to a naval base. Yeah, <clears throat> but uh, I mean, he, he, and then we had horrible things back then, like the Red Scare and so on, which I, you know, hated. But you know, I, but you know, I just uh, it, we just live in a whole different world, and I I don't know if I'd want to be a kid growing up today. You know? you know what's also really sc scaring the kids is the climate change thing. Right. Yep. yep. A lot. That's probably bothering them more than anything. And yet nobody's, yeah. do, nobody's responding like to they, that. They're, they can't do anything and no one's doing anything about it. It's so when, crazy. I live in Michigan and like we haven't even had a average day yet this year. It's been over like every single day. We've had some like record snowfall a couple of times, but... You know, our average should be like 32, and we've been averaging around like 40. Yeah, but you know the yeah. thing—the thing when you're talking about climate change, those things could be different from year to year. And I'm sure if we had time, Patrick would love to do his five cents worth on <laughs> climate change. But climate change, I do believe, is causing like the, these incredible fires in Australia. Something they've yeah. never seen before. Uh, I'm you sure know. Patrick has been experiencing climate change in his weather this year too. Because well, climate change is real. I mean, there's like it, you know, if you watch uh, like Al Jazeera or watch the French network, the, you know, in Indonesia they're already making plans on how to in, in these flatter countries mm -hmm. on how to move the large cities inland because they know they're going to be flooded. Yeah. 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 Uh, you, there's no question about it. They're making. They're devoting. Is Patrick of still there? Is he frozen? Uh, he's frozen he's on frozen my screen. But he changed, and I think he's frozen again. No, oh, he's you're still there. Yeah, yeah. It's just your camera. You, for some reason, you're frozen. So I didn't know if you were still there or not. He's there. <laughs> yeah, uh, because it's a signal I get here that you know tells us what we do. Hey, listen, I, I I've got some. Uh, I won't. I won't be on on Tuesday. Just because I've got an early call on Wednesday uh, for my um, radiation, uh, but uh, I will be here on Wednesday. Okay, come hell Did or high water. Did you confirm that they didn't cancel your call? No, they didn't cancel it. We're we're <laughs> all on. I've got. They sent me. They gave me my whole list of days, and it's the one day I have to be there early because the rest of the day they're dealing with people who are dying or something. I eat a lot know. of beans. Yeah, so I, I have to be uh, be there. I have to be there. I have to be there at like ten thirty in the morning. That means you know that I have to get up to give myself an enema early. Oh, Do you want to know any of this? Okay. Uh. Yeah, I gotta blow it up my ass. Anyway. Hard food. Uh, hey, listen. Uh, oh, there she is. She's holding up her picture. That's art. What's uh, that's our Gab new Gabnet logo? There's our old Gabnet logo. Anyway, that's it for tonight. Uh, thank you so much, Josh, for being here. Kathleen, love you, dear, and uh, the audience does too. Ke uh, Charlie, thank you for being here. Uh, Kevin, good luck with your with your go Niners, with your Niners. Uh, who are the Niners? Oh, oh, the 49ers. I see. Yeah. Okay. No uh, sports. Real men. Jason, thank you. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you, Ray. 
Uh, thanks to all of you. In fact, why don't you just give a big wave goodbye, and I will wave back at you. There we go. There they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's our citizen panel for this night. Uh, that's our citizen panel for this week. Uh, and uh, I, I, uh, Jack Bishop is next with The Intersection, so give him a call and talk to him. He has a lot of fun, too. And um, uh, I will not be here, as I said, on Tuesday night, but I will be here Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday uh, because we're, uh, you know, we're, we're doing our little radiation, our little thing for radiation. Anyway, I'm Alex Bennett. That's it for tonight. We'll see you next week. In the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody. <laughs>